We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right, welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. We are going to discuss Amelia Island and Works Reunion and how that weekend went and a recap and everything that was going on. So um, I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. And welcome to the show. So yep. let's go over this. Uh, so we met, we met up, what was it, Thursday at yep. um, Andrew's Pseudo Shop slash Collection. Yeah, which happens to be not too far from my house. So yeah. That's good to know. So initially, we were going to roll like seven cars deep up to Jacksonville area. That was going to be about a four-hour ride. Um, two days prior, one of our friends uh, got his 71T smashed in the back. And it was a hit and run here in Tampa. What a scumbag move that dude did on him. Um, but he, he was a trooper. He was going to drive it anyways, right? Yeah. I mean, he, I, I didn't know this had happened. And so when I, when he walked into the shop and I saw the, Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's playing with the PMO carbs and Aaron's like, Oh, that sounds good. And I said, well, look at the deck lid. Cause yeah. it was smashed in. It wasn't like totally, totally masked up, but I mean, it was bad. I mean, it's going to need the, the rear deck lid, the bumper. And I think the right rear quarter redone. Thankfully, the motor didn't really suffer any damage. It's acting kind of funky, but. Um, he just dropped like forty thousand dollars on that motor and had because he did a short stroke three two on the car and that's, it's that's na- a nasty little motor. It's a motor. nasty yeah. motor, but it was long story short, it wasn't running right. So we played with that that morning quite a bit, and then he even what maybe drove five miles down the road before he said, "Hey, I need to make another adjustment." And he just kind of said, "Hey, I got to go take this back to the garage and pop in with somebody's car." Yeah, I mean, if we hadn't stopped to get gas, I think I think some of us are filling up. And if we hadn't done that, we continued on the road, and it might have been a bigger issue. Yeah, so road. he, so he, uh, and it wasn't lack of uh, not trying, not that he was scared or anything. The car was running lean, and he just couldn't get it to get enough fuel. He was trying to adjust it to make it run fat, and it just wasn't happening. So he didn't want to cook a piston or anything because that was a pretty long drive. So he did the right thing and put it back. I know that was kind of killing him, but. Like I said before, cars have feelings, and I think this thing was pissed off that it got yeah. punched in the back, and then it was, it's because it's a pretty car, and oh, it, yeah. you know, it was still pretty, but it wasn't pretty at the moment, so I think it was not wanting to be in public, essentially. <laughs> Don't show me around. Exactly. Go fix me now, dude. But, um, so we ended up taking six cars up, leaving from Tampa all the way up to Jacksonville, and, um took a lot of back roads. Uh, some of the guys we were rolling with, they uh, know the back roads really well. And surprisingly enough, there's some, there's some twisties. There isn't like a bunch in Florida, but there was some. And uh, we did some nice spirited driving, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. It was good. I mean, that was probably, I would say that was even better driving than we got to do down from Miami. But I mean, I guess if we'd known the back roads there a little bit better. Yeah, I think that there, we have limited options though yeah. going to Miami because we got to get you know, go around the lake down there, you know, Okeechobee is kind of like a, you know, the determining factor on your way to Miami. So there's more options going north. Um, so we ended up doing that and, you know, we got to make some, some quite, quite a spirited run on a, a couple of the, the passes and got to play with some cars and I was playing with a 996 GT3, which isn't bone stock and yeah, I didn't get too badly ate up on that. Oh, one, not huh? at all. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Drew saw you coming here. You're still there hanging out. <laughs> Same thing with our friend. Uh, he's got a 09 Carrera. Like it's modded out. And I, I ran, probably only pulled one car on me, I think. And we ran pretty good for a while on the road. Yeah, I was really surprised to see that too. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to be yeah. that close either. So needless to say, a little bit of playing on the way up to Amelia. Um, we rolled in town, what, around 3.30-ish? About yeah, that, that sounds about, yeah. And, um, so we, Aaron and I checked in, we had to go pick up media passes and then back to the beach house. We had a house right on the beach. I mean, the place was amazing. Yeah. I, I, I knew it was going to be nice, but I didn't think it was going to be as nice as it was. No, I mean, they really did a good job on, uh, the, on the Google earth that was suspect uh, as to what this house was. Uh, I guess they had just restored it uh, recently and the, the first floor of the house is normal, like three, two mm-hmm. bedroom layout. But then what they did under the house was make it as a full entertainment area from, to, to hold, I'd probably say about 50 people mm-hmm. comfortably, like even with seating and stuff, there's, and it, under the house goes to a full bar, like a full U-shaped yep. pull-up bar area with TV and bench seating around that, and then a fire pit, and then it, 
you couldn't ask for a better house to, to entertain. Yeah, it was pretty wicked. And I, I think we're going to try to book that house again next year. And um, it's a great entertaining spot. It's a great place to kind of like pre-drink and actually break down some barriers where, you know, some famous people do have and, you know, they can be themselves and it's kind of nice. You know, everybody was loosey goosey that came to the house and that was great. And that it's kind of what we wanted, you know, anybody that ended up coming over and we're very grateful for all the guests that did come over yeah. and did spend time with us and hang out and enjoy the views and enjoy, you know, the cocktails we had. And it was great. I mean, I, I like I said, I, I described it perfectly. I didn't expect it to be that nice. Like the views were just epic. And then the weather was perfect. The breeze was blowing, not too hard, not too soft. I mean, it was, it was just perfect out there. Uh, yeah, it was really good. The weather was phenomenal. Yeah. So later that evening, we ended up having um, Al and Jaime from DRT coming over. And uh, we did kind of like a, I guess you would call it maybe kind of a DRT recap slash yeah. what the ethos behind DRT is to kind of educate people. And we ended up running, you know, I don't want to say long because it was a healthy conversation. It's not like we were stretching it by any means, but you know, an hour and a half of recording time. And um, that'll be coming to you guys on uh, Thursday. Um, later this week and then you guys will enjoy that because al is a very well connected guy and again for all of you that don't know i know we've discussed it before but you don't know who drt or what drt is that may be listening all over the world and in in our own country i mean i have a good friend that lives in minnesota when we were originally going to drt and i told him hey we're headed to drt and he sent a text message back like what's drt so, I mean, there are plenty of Porsche people that live in this country that have no idea what DRT is. And I almost kind of look at it as our job to help promote some of these events too, because they are so epic and you're doing yourself a disservice by not going. Yep. I mean, it's definitely in our state, so we gotta, we gotta help that out. Um, that's true. It's probably, it's gotta be one of the premier events on the East coast. It Absolutely. Really and it, as crazy as this sounds, I'm sure it's going to be even bigger next year. And it was, it was massive this year. Yep. So, Good luck guys. I, yeah. I envy what they're capable of doing and Al's very skilled and very connected in in the Miami area to get all these things done. And we're very grateful for them to put on that event and also grateful for them coming over to the house. Um, Funny story when they did arrive, I mean, the house was pretty, you know, packed when we had over, I think we were probably at that point because Wes was there from Titan Motorsports, but he was hanging out with us. So at that point, probably at eight or nine, nine 11s out front, I think. So, you know, people that are driving by it, we were having a mini cars and coffee essentially like, cause we were living, you know, where we were staying at was kind of, I don't want to say a busy road, but people were cruising by to go to the beach. It was and, beach road, beach access yeah. and all that stuff. So yeah. So people were stopping and you could just see like the confusion on their face basically of what was happening there. And, but anyways, this shuttle approaches later in the evening. So it's dark. So all we see is like this bus outside and it stops and people start getting off and we're like, what in the hell is going on here? Yeah, we were only expecting Alan Jaime. Yeah, and, and was, not that it was a problem. I no, mean, we, not at all. We, you know, everybody that came with them, that was great, actually. Oh, yeah. I mean, we had a huge audience while we were podcasting with them. But uh, Wes made a joke, and he was like, dude, did this, like, party information go out on Facebook or something? <laughs> like, what is going on here? I was like, I, I was, like, not nervous, but I kind of figured that was them. So I was like, um, I think that might be Al... And Jaime, but I'm not sure. Hopefully it is, you know, so because they were rolling 10 deep. Yeah. And um, they were with Mark White, too, from Akimoto, and we got to hang out with him, too, as well. So that was great. You know, we got to do some bonding, and, you know, as the weekend went on, we got closer and, you know, exchanged information. So we're going to look forward to have Mark on the show at some point and, you know, discuss his amazing builds that he's doing up in Wisconsin. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so we, we ended up podcasting with them. You know, roughly an hour and a half, they ended up taking off. And then, uh, you know, we all hung out for a while and just kind of did what everybody does. You know, when you're in those things, it's, you know, talked Porsche stuff, talked about the days that are coming, what's coming, you know, um, had some co- more cocktails and then uh, shut it down that evening to get up bright and early the next day, right? Yeah, but it was an early works day. Yeah, it was. So um, Friday works, you know, we get up at what, the butt crack of dawn. It was pretty early. I, I don't know if it was warranted to be that early, but, you know, they have to do the load in and, and park everybody and all that. So, mm-hmm. so you know how it is. There's always, like, you know, some laid back guys in the group or, you know, there's a couple guys that are really anal in the group and somebody wants to get there, you know, before even the workers are set up there. And it's like, come on, man. Like, everybody's trying to talk to the guy, talk him off the ledge. It's like, you don't need to be there. 
right at the butt crack of dawn and like, I gotta get there and wash my car. I gotta get there yeah, and clean it off. I gotta do all this. And, you know, long story short, we ended up taking off. And, you know, I think we left the house at what? Finish or something. I don't know what the yeah, exact I mean, it time wasn't, was. Yeah, it was, kind it was of a pretty blur. close from us too. So it wasn't that bad. Yeah, we were literally like a mile away or half a mile away. So um, we ended up getting in there, you know, checking in an event, which was an outstanding event. Um, thank you to PCA for, you know, obviously hosting and put that, putting on that event. Um, we got to spend a little bit of time with Vu from, uh, the, he's the president of PCA, yeah. um, he was which cool. is great, you know, very down to earth guy. Um, you know, we exchanged some information. Hopefully at some point we'll be able to have him on the show when our schedules do align. Um, he's got some great things to say. Obviously he's a super big enthusiast. He wouldn't be the <laughs> president of PCA yeah, if he wasn't I right. And, um, so all in all, a great event, you know, as far as Friday, you know, you know, hanging out there and all the people we got to meet. Um, what are some of your takeaways from Friday, Aaron? Uh, it was actually uh, one of the bigger works events. It was, it was probably, I wouldn't say double the size, but it was, it was a lot more cars this year than there were last year for the event. Uh, I felt it was well organized. There were vendors were good. Uh, food was actually excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, what else was there? The uh, the Porsche president bringing that recommissioned Carrera GT there. You get to see that without stanchions around it to really yeah. get to look at it and explore what that has to to offer. And that and was amazing. Seeing the other the white Carrera right next to it, and then realizing that uh, Porsche Classic is really getting into doing not just full nuts and bolts restorations, but just helping you keep your maintenance going, mm-hmm. suspension work, stuff like that. Things you just don't really think about. Yeah, big thanks to Ray Schaefer. He spent some significant amount of time with Aaron and I and went over that CGT build and, you know, the depth of that build and the depth of what Porsche Classic is actually doing in Atlanta. Um, if you guys didn't know, um, you should know now if we're broadcasting it, but they, they can commission a rebuild. They can commission just, and that doesn't have to be everything. Um, and what I mean by that, I, it doesn't have to be a full car uh, recommission. Um, if you want to do suspension, they were showing that off as Aaron indicated, like on an old SC, um, just want to do suspension and refresh all that stuff and bring all the suspension back up and bring all the, the trailing arms and the control arms back to life. And that's possible too. So it's really nice that there's options on that list because I know the stereotype behind that is, is like, Oh, if I go there, it's an all or nothing type of deal. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the cool thing about that is Porsche is doing work. Mm-hmm. It's not somebody, I know. I mean, not that anybody else doesn't do great work because they do, but for just the the cool thing of hey, the factory did my stuff. Mm-hmm. Something yeah. else that we, we we learned about the career GT, or at least I did. I didn't know that 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 recommission meant that it's fully zero mild car. Yeah, that's huge, right? Yeah, I it's so huge. All. And all, then all of you guys that have career GTs out there, I know there's like all of like three of you, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all three. No, but in all seriousness, what Aaron was saying is, is that's a huge thing. And um, I don't think it just applies to that car, right? It probably applies to anything that you want to bring them. If you have a 930, if you have an SC, and you're one of those guys that are really want, you know, everything back to the way that it was originally and get that tactile feel and how exactly was. I mean, what he's indicating is they are the only ones in the world that can legally bring your odometer back down to zero and you basically not get screwed over by saying that you messed with the odometer. Yeah, because it's it's a new car at this point and that's crazy and, and they it's more of a an exclusive option too. I mean it's limitless as to what you request. Those wheels that you see on the Carrera GT, the gold in the center, well they're normally magnesium and as all we know, the paint's not gonna stick to that. Mm-hmm. So they actually what Ray was explaining to us that they took silver and then they coated the whole rim with silver. And then, then that's how they got the gold to stick on the five spoke. Yeah, really cool stuff, right? Like, so that's just showing you the R&D there, that you get there, not saying that you can't get that at a third party or anything like that. And um, I think another thing that I want to touch on when we discussed with Ray, and he made it a really good point, and I totally agree with what he said, you know, as long as somebody's putting out quality work, they don't have an issue with it because the, the market is big enough for all of us to exist in, you know, including, you know, maybe from an entertainment standpoint or a car building standpoint. And, and I thought that was really cool because he's big Porsche, right? Like they're, they're top of the hill. And 
you know, they anybody third party who's building a quality product, they're all for it. And yeah. and I think that's really cool of them because sometimes you get a manufacturer who wants to maybe kind of be more closed off, right? Who wants to say, well, I can't discuss anything that's happening over there. I don't really care about it. But if you want something done here, this is how we can do, you know, as far as them to be open to say, hey, there's enough out there for everybody. I think that's really, I, don't, I guess, classy, I guess, is the best way to yeah. describe it. And it's funny that they're Porsche classic. So it's kind of, you know, <laughs> ixo facto on yeah, that. I guess so. I mean, it keeps the community alive. So that's what that does at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think the key word where is it there for, for Ray, and I, and I totally agree with that, is like, classy work right like make sure they're doing quality and classy work not somebody who's out there just hacking to hack and then you know pushing it off as quality work because that you're really taking away from the hobby and you know screwing over enthusiasts if so-called and and you're not doing anybody any favors but i don't want to go down that tangent but um yeah so it was great we had some some quality time with ray and um some quality time with vu um, we also met Peter from Gunther Works. They brought their car out, which was amazing. Yeah, to see that carbon fiber weave all over the car, and, and it was just phenomenal to see that. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it was so great looking, it looked fake. Yeah. But it wasn't. So that's just how high-level quality Peter and his team are doing at Gunther. Unbelievable car. I really like the blue graphics, though. That, that was good, the blue yeah. script. And, you know, someone was asking me, because they're only commissioning 25 uh, open carbon builds, that's what they're calling, car oh, exposed carbon yeah. builds, I guess, on the cars, where they just clear coat over the carbon. And there, somebody was asking me, well, why, why are they doing that? Because it is so difficult to have perfect carbon exposed the entire car and just to be pumping them out. So, yeah. I mean, that's why it is a low number, because that's how meticulous they are. Like, Peter shared a story with us about... No one else could see something, but he's so meticulous that he saw one of their carbon fiber exposed cars. It had something imperfection that he did not like to his own eye. So guess what? That car went off and got painted. Yep, that's what you do with it. Mm hmm That was huge. So pretty amazing that we got to spend some time doing that. But moving on, we were able to uh, meet up with uh, Jeff Short as well and had a conversation with him. That was pretty amazing. Um, got into all that, you know, and talked to, we shared a lot of common friends and threads. And, you know, Jeff is a very busy guy, as we all know. And, yeah. But he was able to share some time with us, which was pretty great. Um, met with David from G Program. Um, if you don't know who they are, I think they're up in Oyster Bay. Yeah. And they also have just uh, released P Car Market. Um, so we're going to try to link up with them and, and do a project there. And, something amazing there you know that's kind of like stimulating and just the support that we're getting from those guys is pretty awesome um leaving anybody out no we talked to Manny. you talked to manny a lot when we were yeah there, i did right? talk to manny a pretty good bit and he he was telling us they were telling me he was talking he was like yeah i listened to the show and all this other i was like well i was kind of taken back by that i was like i, I didn't know he listened or i never you know so we started talking and ended up talking porsches and he was asking about the 992 that was sitting in front of the stage and what I liked about it and we, what he liked about it. And, and then, uh, yeah, just, just a conversation about Porsche stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, um, just everybody that kind of came up to us that day, we're very grateful and thankful for that. You know, it, we're, we're really humbled by it, but you know, at the same time, we, we just love meeting anyone who comes up. They're like, Hey, listen to the show. And, you know, always ask them, Hey, where are you from? What are you doing? And, you know, we handed out, gazillion stickers to everybody who you know does listen and stuff like that like we don't sell that stuff we just want to give them away to people that yeah. you know are you know listeners and stuff like that um we're not in the business to try to sell swag or any of that kind no. of stuff so i mean and, and even if you even if you don't listen like we, i was just in line to get coffee and uh, a guy named steven was just he said how are you doing all that stuff and was talking to me and then uh he's like well what car do you have or what'd you bring he's like well i brought, brought the speedster mm -hmm. like, oh just a speedster that's it and he's like You'll never believe the story. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, I want to know now. And uh, so his kids ended up uh, cutting lawn for an uh, uh, older, older um, couple. And he was a doctor. And I guess he'd owned the speedster for a long time. And he got ill and then didn't, didn't just covered it up, didn't drive it. Up in the bar and he ended up passing away. And then, so as the kids were cutting the lawn, he was like, they're like, dad, there's this Porsche in, the, in this lady's 
barn and they're, they're not driving. And he's like, oh, really? And so Stephen goes over there and it's under the cover and he kind of peels it back a little bit and he, hmm, that's red. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Pulls it back a little bit more and then sees these two little, little bumps on the back. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, this is, <laughs> this is exciting. And then, uh, so he figured out a way. Speedster was, it was, uh, guards red on, on the red wheels. Wow. And man, it's a pretty car. Um, so he ended up getting the car. He said, and she gave it to him. So I don't know what that means, but yeah, maybe he just stole it from her yeah. essentially. Just like take it, you know, for whatever, you know, make up a number, you know, he was willing to pay it. How long ago did, was that? Then when that occurred, did he um, say, I don't think he's had it too long. I don't remember if we talked to uh, timeline. I don't okay. think we did. But yeah. But yeah. they're still out there, apparently, right? Apparently so, so. yeah. And this was random because I I saw it pull in and then this coffee meeting, and then there he was. There was the guy that drove it in. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, got a lot of stuff to talk about still about Friday. Um, we want to talk about some of our favorite cars that we ended up seeing and all that stuff like that. But uh, before we do that, let's take a short break, and then uh, we'll be right back. Enjoying P Car Talk? Of course you are. Connect with us on Instagram at pcartalk or on our website at pcartalk.com. If you're enjoying P Car Talk, please subscribe and share this with anyone that would enjoy it as well. We thank you for your support. Now enjoy the rest of the show. All right, we're back from break and uh, going to go over some of the cars that we saw on Friday. Um, I know all this gets kind of wonky sometimes when you try to like talk about cars on a podcast because there isn't a, a ton of visuals, but I did post some of these cars on my Instagram feed. So if you guys want to follow those, there's our, uh, at Mike964 or at PCAR Talk on Instagram. We'll, we'll post some of these photos too of these cars so you guys can see them. Um, but there was a signal green car. It wasn't even on the show field. It was in the corral, right? It should have been on the show field. Yeah. Because, man, I mean, it was... It was a backdate car. It was a backdate car, and it had some, some Singer-esque-ness to it. Mm-hmm. But, it, like we said, signal, signal gray with... Or signal green with uh, <laughs> gray script. Was it gray script on the side? I think so, yeah. I mean, it was, it was really well done. The same type satin finish that you see on the Singer cars for the Fuchs wheels. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was any plus size. Maybe they were 17s. They were kind of big. I think so, yeah. For the car. But I mean, it was, all, it was very well put together. Yeah, it didn't look out of place at all. Um, you know, which made this back date a little different. There was a lot of little trick things in the car. So like on the back de- deck vent, it had kind of a, a GT3 RSR inspired snorkel where it would slam air in kind of like a modern, you know, RSR car has. Um, on its back deck lid. Um, I know that sounds kind of funky. I have a picture of it, but um, trust me, it was really choice. I'll post a picture of it. Um, just little trick things like that um, that kind of sent it apart. It had a real nice custom-made front lip diffuser. Um, just simple kind of stuff where it kind of set it apart from a normal back date. And, you know, it's just one of those cars. And, and I think what really set the car off too, it had a 4.1 liter in it. So, just, you know. <laughs> just a little bit. Nothing, no big deal on that, right? But um, obviously, we're clearly motorsport guys because we're gravitated towards that car. And then to find out that it had a 4.1 liter, I about lost my damn mind. That's going to be just a wicked, wicked ride. Yeah, and he wasn't even showing the car. How awesome is that? He's like, yeah, I don't give a shit, whatever. Yeah, but that's one of those, that's one of those little secrets to Amelia's yeah. or, or, or works in general. Go check out the corral because you'll be surprised every time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Not to discredit anything that was in the, um, you know, the judged area around the show field, but um, the corral was just as potent. You know, there were some monster heavy hitter cars out there that, you know, maybe the show field filled up early and for whatever reason, they didn't get an opportunity to bring their car out there. Maybe they were late to the game. Maybe they didn't care. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of nice cars out there like there always is, you know, in the corral of most places, there is always a lot of people that, you know, maybe they just don't care to show the car, you know, they don't want to clean it off. They don't feel like being judged. They just want to drive and be a part of the event. So, I mean, that was pretty amazing too, to just do a lap out there and see the variety of and everything. And that was great. Yeah. I don't know what the actual car count was, but it, was, it, was, it had to be pretty deep. I yeah. Mean, probably 400. What did Boo say? This was the third event or the fourth one they've done? Uh, I think it's the fourth. Okay. The fourth. So this is the fourth time. So, I mean, it's still pretty new in its infancy and it, in, in, in it was pretty strong. Yeah, it was. It's a we pretty yeah, yeah, pretty young event. That's what Manny and I were talking about. Manny was the one that I guess talked to the guys on the West Coast to bringing this on the East Coast, mm-hmm. and that was his whole thing. And and then for it to finally 
started gaining some traction. Yeah. A good amount of Porsches there for sure. Yeah, there was a, it was pretty heavy um, from that standpoint. We were at the last one. We This was in our first time there and it was pretty good last year as well, you know, and, and I would say there was probably, I would say 25% more cars this year. I mean, it is, again, I don't know what the account was last year, what this count was, but I'm just saying from a presence of seeing visually what I saw last year and what I saw this year, there's probably about 25% more cars, I think. It's probably because all the 964s and a lot of them. Yeah, right. They were celebrating 36, 30 years of 964 um, at this event. And um, there were some great 964s. And not to take any credit away from the guys that were on the show field that had 964s, I, I'm, my car was being out there judged. but. I kind of felt like a, a lone ranger out there as far as like mods go, right? Like I was kind of like everybody else was yeah. bone, bone stock. There was a lot of stock 964s and a lot of Ars Americas too. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but no. I just kind of, you know, with, with like we talked about before, you know, there's, you know, there's a turning of the page, I guess. But, uh, you know, in the corral, there were a lot of 964s that had their own flavor and a little bit of mod to them. And, and those were beautiful. And, they were out there, and I wish some of those guys, those were show-worthy cars. They could have brought them in, and, oh, well, I mean, it is what it is, I guess, right? Yeah, but that's what gives the Corral its flavor. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um, and I'm saying that the cars that were on the field weren't worthy, you know, of being judged, uh, and, and that's not where I'm going with that. Uh, and because they're stock, that they're not any good, I'm not saying that either. I just, I'm just describing my own feelings of how I felt when I was out there. It kind of felt like a lone wolf as opposed to when I was at DRT felt there was a lot more modded cars you know tastefully modded obviously not in the sense of like oh it's just modded to be modded but everything is like oem plus plus you know like kind of drew to indicates all the time yeah i guess that was more of a i guess i guess the younger enthusiast was at the drt event that's what yeah. i would probably get at that's probably why we saw But you that. know i met some older gentlemen that had modded cars there too so i think it's just kind of one of those flavors it's just maybe just miami yeah, it could be. You know, maybe because it was the moniker of it was Amelia Island, and even though Works was its own event, maybe because it's attached to a uh, Concourse d'Elegance, you know, they, people see that name and they're like, I'm not going to that damn thing. Yep. You know, and maybe that spooks people away. I don't know. And if it does and you're listening, you know, don't let it spook you away. You know, like uh, there's places for everybody out there. You know, I was there and, you know, I'm not a, a yuck it up and, you know, running a Duesenberg type of guy, like, I, not that I don't have, you know, respect for those cars, but, you know, obviously, clearly my car's modded to, you know. Yeah, you know, stance with an LS, we know. <laughs> yeah. I had to, funny story, we'll get to that on Cars and Coffee, but, um, yeah, so that was Friday. Um, a lot of great cars. Uh, another car I want to highlight I put on my feed, there was a 930, one of one, it's a 1979 Golf Blue. Oh, I was going to talk about this one, but yeah, that was... How oh, pretty is that car? It is. The, it's the best. I mean, it's it's the equivalent of what you'd want to build if you built one in Gulf Blue. And before anybody was ever doing a special color mm-hmm. for any car. Yeah. So, I mean, this is early, guys. 1979. It's a PTS color. So, it wasn't called PTS back then, but you know how it goes. Um, this guy was the third owner. He was an elderly gentleman, but he yeah. was still driving, which is awesome. And, uh, and I'm going back to this because I'm kind of like a hot rod kind of guy anyways. This guy's like, if I had to guess, 70 plus years old. His car was lowered. It yeah, was it not was running good. on, you know, AKA Safari build ride height. Like yeah. it was, you know, it wasn't stanced by any means, but it was definitely lowered. It was aggressive. And it was like, dude, you're my hero. Like, I want to be you when I'm your age. That was awesome. Like you have an awesome car and good for you and you drive the hell out of it and and i mean it looked immaculate too but he drives the car which is cool yeah he ended up winning something too i don't remember what which which award it was i can't remember what he won either he might have just won his class it might have just been the 930 <laughs> class. maybe he did you know I, I i don't remember exactly but well deserved win on that honestly because you know and there's a rumor I, I didn't get to speak with the gentleman but i've heard stories about um there's a standing offer when unfortunately when he passes away, because I mean, he's a realist. He obviously knows you can't live forever. And, uh, I guess the ca- it's like the car's already been spoken for and the, yeah, there's uh-huh. already been an agreed a dollar amount for whoever's inheriting the car. That's where the car's going to end up. And if I've heard it somewhere in Texas. So yeah, that's a pretty good dollar amount by the way too. Yeah. Quarter million dollar kind of amount. Um, but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous cars there. Um, anything else that you want to talk about before we move on that stood out to you at that event? I mean, 
the backyard builds guys brought brought a customer car that they built there um it was like a kind of a nardo gray type of car that yep. they've backdated and um if you don't know who they are they're on instagram they do backyard builds they're kind of a, a small shop but they're doing quality work i think they were located in north carolina and we got to speak with them for a little bit and funny enough they were staying two houses down by us on the beach so yeah one of one of the guys staying with us west was looking i guess he got i don't know if he got a dm or what but he's like hey uh there, there's guys they're like two houses down and they sell all of our cars and they ask what's going on yeah unfortunately they were busy and we were busy and we couldn't get on the same page and link up but um maybe next year uh but definitely give them a shout, give them a look, you know, they're on Instagram. It's not going to cost you anything to see what they're doing, but, um, they're doing some quality work. They have an RSR rebuild, uh, recommissioned or backdate or replica or whatever whatever they're calling them nowadays. But obviously it, um, it looks the business, it sounds the business and it's definitely, you know, looks outstanding. And I would take that car any day of the week. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah. They're putting that thing around and mashing on it and um, make me want, want to build one of those. But uh, yeah, that was a great car. And, you know, some of the other stuff that kind of stood out to me there, obviously John Oates' car was there with Rod Emery, and, and I'm sure you guys have seen it. And, you know, the best way I can describe it is kind of it's like a mocha color. Uh, very, yeah, that's a good color, yeah, mocha. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what the official term is on it, but um, obviously John Oates reached out to Rod Emery to build a custom-build car, and, you know, you guys all know who Rod Emery is, and, and I'm sure you've seen this car in either Panorama or on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, but, I mean, it's the best of the best. It's fast, it looks sexy, it looks like an outlaw, it's it's low, it's aggressive, It's it sounds mean, and yep. it's just, all, it checks every box. It makes you want a 356, I tell you that right now. Yeah. You just see it, you're like, yep, that's what I want. Exactly. If you are not a 356 guy, that car will make you a 356 guy. I mean, and it's mocha, but it's mocha on uh, a brown leather, a little bit lighter brown, and then on the black steelies, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just looks so the business, right? Like the pure definition of like what you would expect from like Rod's moniker, the, the outlaw, you know, that, oh, they, yeah. that were getting coined as, you know, when they were younger, you know, getting pushed out of events like this, like Rod always describes, you know, it's like we had to park like, you know, three blocks down because it wouldn't even let us park in the parking lot. <laughs> so, and now he's front and center. So I'm um, good for him. And, you know, that amazing amazing car you know like we spoke to john oates for a little bit and had some in-depth conversations good guy real big porsche guy um we've seen him at multiple multiple events he was at works last year um hung out with him a little bit at ren sport and he's a he's an enthusiast man like he's the he's the real deal like he's still pumping out music and still doing his music thing but he definitely has a special place in his heart for porsche no but things what helps him get all the rock out yeah right so, um, so that was essentially works. I think that wrapped up around 3 p.m., right? Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, we were out around then. Yeah, so then we kind of rolled back to the house um, that day and uh, kind of hung out, decompressed a little bit, um, went out to dinner at a really nice place on the island called Baxter's. They treated us like family there. Um, we went there multiple nights, actually. <laughs> we did. Uh, not because, well, not because we really planned on it. It just happened to, the, our plan B happened to work out, I guess. The first restaurant, we didn't think about it on, on the Saturday night, was packed with people. We didn't think about trying to make a reservation, but Baxter's hooked us up, got us a table for 10, no problem, early. Food was great. I recommend the steak. Yeah, it was a, it was a great place, and they took care of us, like I said, like family. And We didn't have a reservation somewhere, but they, uh, they cleared a 10-spot table out for us, which is everyone knows how hard that, that is to do. Um, on both nights, they made room for us for, for our party at 10. And uh, they took care of us, no problem. And then we went back to the house, and um, another guest is going to be coming on, you know, well, he is already on the show, and we're working, you know, on editing that episode, but you're going to get to hear that in the following week. Um, Wes from Titan Motorsports, who also runs Swine 11. Um, it's a pretty awesome thing that he's doing there, and those that you know him, like his roots came from a, a Supra background, um, but what they did is, you know, they built a, a very very successful business um around super horsepower here in orlando uh florida and um he's still obviously currently employed there but um he's a porsche enthusiast he owns quite a few of them and uh his partner in crime you know nero has some porsches as well and um they're just great guys and great porsche guys and west came on the show evening that evening and we ran about what an hour and a half with west that evening on, on just talking about porsche stuff yeah it was easily an hour and a half I didn't, I looked at one point and I was like, wow, well, okay. I knew I was good on the time. I also looked again. I was like, oh, we've already gone. Yeah. As long as we can. Yeah. 
But yeah, like I said, guys, we don't really, you know, set a timeline, you know, we run our own thing, which is nice. So you guys are going to get to get all that juicy content the following week. And uh, we really appreciate Wes coming on the show. So that kind of closed out Friday night. Yep. We shut down the engines and, um, you know, hit the sack. And then Saturday was Cars and Coffee. Um, talk a little bit about Cars and Coffee, Aaron. Yeah, Cars and Coffee was, was good. I didn't get to experience it last year. I ended up, because of everything, I think it rained and then it compressed some events. So I ended up doing Festivals of Speed last year. So I really, I, I caught the tail end of Cars and Coffee and I realized it, what I had missed out on. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't missing it this year. So coming into it, we did our, our um, I didn't go in as early as Mike did. Mike had to park on the field. I didn't get registered, <laughs> unfortunately. But fortunately, we, we ended up having our media passes. So that works out for parking. Mm-hmm. Coming over bridge, we get there. And then just car after car after it was a very very massive cars and coffee i don't know how many cars were there but but the presence of porsche was definitely there yeah it was felt right i think that we had i think porsche we i think we had the the largest showing of cars there you can say we yeah it's a family yeah you're part of it we we works (laughs) (laughs) we yeah but yeah and like aaron said it was a pretty massive event and um all the cars that were there are pretty, pretty outstanding. Uh, essentially, it was like a works reunion slash two uh, out on that a field there. Um, everything that was out there was out at works. Not that that made anything less interesting by any means. It was just the representation that were there is it's real. So the the Porsche car family is strong, guys. Yeah, it's definitely alive and kicking for sure. Yeah, so they dominated that event, which was great. You know, I got to talk again with Jeff Schwartz and then um, Al again that day. We, you know, we had some conversations with him. You know, and that was the morning that we got to spend a little bit more time with Mark White from Akimoto and look at his safari build that he's done and some of the amazing things that he's building and talk to him and try to network with him to come on in the future. And if you guys haven't, you know, checked him out, you should definitely check him out, Akimoto. They're located in Wisconsin. Um, he's doing some amazing things up there. Definitely a clean safari build. Sure. Very ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting because another badass place that's in Wisconsin is Kelly Moss, right? So is that... Have... Oh, man, that that car looks so tough. It looks like you like you literally took everything you wanted to on a 4 by 4 truck and somebody set it up and then you put it in an Nylon. Yeah. I mean, matte black, the light bars, the, you just there's nothing you can't conquer. That's that car looks like, like a sledgehammer, right? It does. It's like... I'm here to take care of stuff. (laughs) And it does. Yeah. That thing is all business and super sexy. It's riding on KO2s. It's just a beast. And um, yeah, we got to talk with them a little bit and we're looking forward to working with them on a project as well um, to come on the show. And we love everything they do because they're super motorsport. You know, they build race cars for a living. If you don't know who they are, I don't know why you wouldn't know who they are because they're a huge player out here on the East Coast. And um, people, you know, all these these third party race private teams, they're having their cars tweaked and built there. You know, not only are they, you know, building or people buying these cup cars, like when you buy your cup car, they're taking them there to get dialed in. So that what's that saying? And then then people are trying to take them racing and trying to win championships from them. So obviously they got their shit together. Yeah, they know a couple things. Yeah. And um they're great guys, you know, super approachable and um very humble and we're humble that we got to spend some time with them and talk with them and really, really looking forward to opportunities, you know, coming down the line with them. Um, so yeah, that was cars and coffee and I got a funny story about cars and coffee, I guess is kind of interesting. Um, those that do know me personally, you know, they know that obviously I want my car to be clean, but, um, the end of the day, you know, it's one of those things. It's, it was cars and coffee at Amelia, but, uh, you know, I didn't wipe my car down. You know, I saw everybody out there shining their cars and stuff like that, but uh, I wasn't one of them. And I saw like a video, you know, somebody had posted, which was funny. And then just some random person, you know, kind of was like, Hey, you need to get this guy over here and wipe his car down. I don't know if that was serious. I don't know if it was just a joke, but, um, I didn't know the individual. I just heard it on a video that was, I was tagged in. I, I got a, I got a laugh out of it. I thought it was a hoot. I'm sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, no feelings hurt at all. I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was a funny FYI that, you know, if maybe it was a joke, maybe it wasn't a joke, but the way I approached it was, it's not like my car was filthy. I had some like dew drops on it that accumulated some dust from the beach. 
I mean, we're not talking about like this is a safari build that had like mud all over it or anything like that. It wasn't even close to that, but obviously it wasn't concourse clean either. Um, but I just thought it was, that was kind of funny because my approach was, well, I'm going to be driving the car out of here and then it's going to park again overnight and then I'm going to drive it 300 miles home from here. So it's not, getting dirty. Not going to clean it again because it's a driver, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> If you haven't picked up on that, guys, that's the moniker. It's a driver, bro. Yeah, thanks, like, Danny. Yeah. So anytime you guys ever get rock chips on your car and it's not pretty anymore, if it's not clean, just use that. Somebody says that to you. You're like, I drive my car, man. It's a driver, bro. Exactly. So don't let anybody hit you with that. But I just thought it was an interesting tidbit, you know, of information that, you know, that kind of occurred. Um, before I get too far from that, that morning, uh, thankfully, you know, to the Amelia Highland crew and Chris Brewer, um, director of communications kind of set us up originally with our media passes to begin with. So a huge shout out and thank oh, you to yeah. him. Thanks, and, Chris. And their huge uh, staff and support and all that stuff. So that morning was the VIP brunch that we went to. That was outstanding. No, oh, delicious chicken and waffles. Yeah. Can't go wrong. And uh, we feel very thankful and honored that we got to be a part of that. And uh, again, kudos and thank you for rolling out the red carpet um for us and thank you thank you so much um chris and your entire staff you guys always do a bang up job every year we ever been to amelia um obviously we just recently launched so this is the first time we've ever done any type of media type of behind the scenes but as expected they kicked ass and they always do I did keep our mimosas and cars and coffee theme going on though and <laughs> I, I, I wasn't hating that yeah yeah, so like that thing where we're, where we were ruined at the collection, we got a little bit of taste of that it keeps <laughs> at happening. this event, right? It just keeps randomly happening. So yeah, I was like, hey, it's a good day. This kind of reminds me of being at the collection, right? We got food and we're, we have mimosas at the moment. So yeah, the uh, the brunch was actually for it was Automobile, the magazine was doing an all star awards ceremony. So that was the precursor to that. Was mm-hmm. there all the media people were coming up? They had the eggs and bacon and mimosas, obviously. Yeah. And other things. Yeah. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Automobile uh, Magazine, for hosting that event. Um, that was top notch, and um, very thankful that we got some food in our bellies and got to talk to some people. And the nice goodie bag they gave away is too, with all the sponsors and everything that they did on that. We feel very privileged to be even included again in that. Again, yeah. who are we? We're nobodies. Yeah, like seriously, exactly. thank you guys so much. And um, you know, we hope that we you know we represented you know the Porsche world. <laughs> You know, and didn't look like hoonigans while we were in there. No, so. there was a there was a Panamera GTS that happened to be there. I guess it's the, the newest version of it. Uh, something that we noticed is it didn't say Sport Turismo; it just said Panamera on it. Yeah, that is that was an interesting thing. And another interesting thing about that is, uh, you know, Aaron posted some photos of that of that as well, and the price is significantly less. Yeah. Than uh, they had been before. Less than my mind. Yeah. It, and I don't know if it had launched at a certain price, but I thought it was launching kind of base 180. And then we both looked at the number and I was yeah, like, like, this did, doesn't make sense. Did you see this? Because yeah. it looked like it, a GTS version of it, um, of the Sport Turismo, but Panamera now, I guess. Mm-hmm. There's all encompassing brand for 135. Yeah. And I know that sounds pretentious to say that's like a, a savings, but like they were at 190 before options. Yeah. That's before. what I was thinking as well. So I don't know if we missed something there, but I'll do some research more to come some that's on a further episode. But, you know, that was kind of cool to see that. And yeah, maybe they're on sale now. Yeah, maybe right. we got one. Yeah, I mean, they're just giving them away at 135. I just need 135. Starting <laughs> with zero. <laughs> I don't know how that worked. but Dollar a time. Yeah, right. But uh, that was interesting to say, to see. And we did a quick lap, you know, of everything inside um, at the auctions and looked at the auction cars because there was a big auction that happened on Friday the day prior and there was a lot of stuff that went for sale. Um, some interesting things that sold and there was obviously auction and it's running every day and different auctions were more, more successful than other auctions. We're not going to name auctions, but we do want to talk about some of the cars that did go for auction, right? Yep. So uh, which ones kind of stood out in your mind? The Kermit car, obviously. It, yeah. didn't, it went for a lot lower than you would expect anything for the 997 GT3 RS and that green color that we all love. Mm-hmm. It ended up only going for, for 160 Yeah, which insane, is a, right? a value to whoever bought it. Yeah, someone stole that car, and that was a no-reserve car. You know, I was, that event was actually occurring while we were still at works. So we had a group of our friends that went over and just sat in on the auction. I think a couple of them had paddles that may have bought a car or, or was going to buy a car, 
some of them, some of the people weren't registered. They were just kind of seeing what the market's doing. And when I got that text message with that picture, oh man, I'll tell you, I was like, you got to be kidding. Tell me one of you bought that. Please, please tell me one of you bought He's like, no, I didn't have a battle for this event. And I'm like, I would have bought it. Because I mean, those that you guys have a, a, a pulse on the market, I'm not saying that they're worth this, but the trading value of that car was going at 275 on, uh, on the secondhand market, not at auction. You know, that's the ask on a lot of those cars. Now, was that number inflated? To you know, I'll just say like even keel on it. I don't know. Like yeah, maybe now. I mean, now that there's a new price or at least a recent price. Yeah. So just comparing the asking price as opposed to what they got that on that's a steal, right? Because that's a pretty rare color. Um, I think they, somebody was mentioning they've made like 20 plus of those in the world. Um, which is funny though, because that was a sidebar conversation. It's like, well, they only made 20 something of those in the world. It's like, I see eight or nine of them at any given point. So, yeah. Um, that, you know, is that's that the Porsche number or <laughs> is that the real number? Yeah. But, um, that was interesting to see as well, because I, I think the estimate obviously was clearly a lot higher. I didn't see the sticker on that because we kind of did a preview when we first got there on Thursday. But I mean, it was like a flyby while we had a cocktail on our hand, just kind of scoping through everything so we could get back to the house quickly. But um, I didn't see that one, what the estimated price was, but I would guess that we're probably guessing that car was going to go from anywhere from like, yeah, 225 to 300. I bet you that that was the range on that car, you know, and it went for a lot less. So another somebody you know, probably hung themselves after this, but uh, a GT2 RS, uh, the new spec one, the new one, um, sold for like 320. Ugh. Someone took a heavy hit on that. I mean, the car had delivery miles on it, so it was probably a flipper or whoever brought that car, but that car was a no reserve, so that was a sale. Every car I'm talking about is a sale car. It wasn't like, oh, well, it didn't hit reserve and didn't sell. Like, that sold at 320. Well, is that car worth it? I mean, I don't know. I think people were paying 500 of them for them, right? Yeah, and then another 911R situation. I think it's hyped up. Yeah, I heard some kind of I don't know, rumor mill number about how many got delivered to North America. I can't confirm nor deny the number, but it was just conversation pieces. Somebody said something about 1,500 of those got delivered to North America. Could be total bullshit. I mean, I don't know. That's a lot of cars. You know how people get, people get standing around, get to drinking, people spouting out of the mouth. Who knows? It's about no facts. Exactly, right? It could be the truth. It could not. I'm not in that market, so I couldn't tell you. I didn't do the research. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. And then, you know, if that's true, that's true. If not, oh, well. Um, so I thought that somebody, regardless of how many there are, I just know what the prices of people that have their allocations or, or receive them, which they, what they paid. And it was like at the 500 mark, some of them. So to see that car go at 320. I don't know if that's a steal or if that's a market adjustment, you know, like maybe, and we kind of had that talk behind us scenes in our own little circle of maybe the market is adjusting a little bit. Um, not necessarily want to say cooling, but maybe people are throttling black to say, Hey, I'm not going to pay $200,000 for a special color anymore. Like I'm over that. Yeah. And maybe that if I think if they do that or enough people do it, it will correct and then it'll, it'll come down. Correct. It'll, they'll feel like it's still over, but reasonable. Mm -hmm. And again, and we, we also speculated, you know, the people that do buy a lot of cars and auctions, some of them are with us and they were saying, you know, it, that, uh, these auctions, since they're at this time of the year, they usually set the tone for the rest of the year. And if that's setting the tone, and they're going to be on a decline or they're going to do a market adjustment or anything like that. I'm all for it, to be honest with you, because obviously we all know, like, I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars just to be throwing away on stuff uh, to pay inflated prices. So that's good news for all of us, because everybody who's listening, I'm sure, is an enthusiast. We're not flippers, because I'm sure anybody who's a broker or a flipper probably doesn't know who the hell we are, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. Better prices for all of us. Yeah, better prices for the for the people who really want to drive them, right? Who want to get out there and beat on them and, and experience what that car is going to do and, and put some more money back in your pocket instead of actually having to overpay to be a part of that now, right? So that could be good news on the horizon for the rest of us. I'm, I'm hearing good news. Yeah. I'm hearing lower prices. That's always a win, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, that was Friday, mix of Saturday. I know we kind of spilled back into that day, but those auctions kind of happened that day. So when we did our, our lap outside, you know, that's what we kind of saw. And then we kind of went back to the field and 
you know, it was pretty warm. So um, they were released us, I guess, like let us leave the field at 1 p.m. And uh, we headed back to the house and hung out for a while and kind of just did the beach thing, you know, not just the, uh, you know, it's not all Porsche always, you know, it was about experiences and relationships. We had some, some other people come over to the house. Sarah from LA Dismantler came over and spent some time with us and had some cocktails with us and we talked about her business and maybe possibly her coming on to the podcast at some point where our schedules can link up. And, you know, if you guys don't know what she does, I mean, it's in the name title, they're a Porsche Dismantler. That's what they do. They sell parts. Um, from rent cars, so they're OEM parts, and um, they ship them all over the world. They're located out of LA, and um, they're always selling OE great stuff, right? Yeah, man, pretty good prices too on their stuff. So, yeah, if you need something, check them out for sure. Yeah, that's the alternative of trying to buy factory new. Yeah. Um, and as we all know, the Porsche tax is real, right? Well, so, I mean, sometimes that stuff just doesn't exist. Good point, right? So, you know, the, and that, they're not selling just new stuff. They sell everything, air, like lots of air-cooled stuff, lots of old-school stuff. So if you're looking for parts, they're the ones gobbling them up out there. And, you know, obviously they got to make a buck on it, but they're not gouging people for them. So that's a nice part is that there's places like this that exist for people like us to go out and get car- stuff for your cars. Like, oh, I need taillights. I need this. Like, oh, I don't want brand new because my car's not brand new. Maybe... You know, you need some patina. You exactly, need some a little, little bit. Yeah, you know, a little bit where it doesn't look too goofy on the car, right? Like, okay, if the car's got some wear on it. I'm gonna put. Well, you're gonna put what brand new headlight on it, and the other one's kind of got some eight. So now you gotta buy two headlights. It's a, it just turns into a thing. Everybody knows how that is when you're dealing with a thirty plus year old car. Yep. So I don't, but you do. Yeah. But it was great to have her over at the house, and then later that evening we ended up meeting up with them again after dinner and having some more cocktails and just. Not necessarily talking business, just talking Porsche, right? Because that's what we do. We're not always, you know, this isn't, it's not even business, really. No, it's just Porsche business. Just, just, gone. just talking Porsches. That's because it. everybody we run into is just so much of a nut. We just talk Porsche with them, and that's where this came from and all that stuff. So it was great, you know. Um, and that was a great night. We hung out with them, and then we hung out with um, Eddie from RMC. He hung out with us for the majority of the night. You know, he went to dinner with us, and uh, so did Danny. Um, Danny's father owns RMC Peter. Peter. He's a great guy. and got to hang out with him at, uh, cars and coffee for a little bit. He didn't join us for dinner, but, um, you know, we hung out, did some stuff and, and that was a good night, you know, and we met up with, uh, what was it unintentionally, but, you know, we ended up running into them at the Ritz at the bar, uh, road scholars, Charles yeah, from road Charles, scholars. Yeah, it was, we were there. Well, we, we intentionally went to the Ritz because that's, that was the game plan at some point. We mm-hmm. didn't factor in the time change. We get there, the bar pretty much closed down. Yeah, we got down. like one drink. We did. And then we were just sitting there, and then I looked over, and I saw the jacket of one of the guys that I guess helps them out, and I walked over there. I was like, hey, uh, are you the Road Scholars guys? Because Mike had been DMing him DM with, uh, I guess it was with, Charles. With Charles, yeah, yeah, I was speaking with Charles we through, didn't, through Instagram. We didn't know. Exactly. I didn't know who their representative, yeah. who speaks to us, but. So we ended up calling the first guy over. He's like, oh, no, no, that's, uh, that's Charles. He's like, you were probably talking to Charles. Yeah, and so we ended up talking to Charles for a, a good while. Yeah. And again, I know we kind of have a global span on this podcast. If, you know, to give a little background on Road Scholars, they're based out of Durham in North Carolina. And like, they're doing like the tip top stuff. Like uh, the best places to think about like big names. I'll do some name dropping type of stuff, like levels of like, Jerry Seinfeld, the Ingrams, they bring their cars to these guys to get done. So that's the level that these guys are on and kudos to them because they are top notch. They put out some quality work and they're not pretentious. They're super cool guys. No, that's so, the most down to earth person. I mean, yeah, it, it was cool. It's and the cool thing is, is they have friends all over. He was telling about an adventure drive that they're going to be doing in Austin. And, you know, I'm sure over time we get close to them, maybe we may be joining on on one of these drives. So they have friends all over the US and uh, clearly Porsche friends because that's what they do. But um, you know, reflecting back, even though they're doing these high end builds and all these cars, you know, the underlying theme there was we were talking about driving. So he was talking about adventure drives, you know, and this isn't something that you can go on the internet and buy into. It's not one of those like gumball rallies. It's not something like that. It's just a 30 guys who like Porsches that know each other and go for a drive. And that's what I'm talking about when I say adventure drive. So I don't want to paint the picture of this. like, let's just sticker clad the car and drive across the country and be assholes and throw stuff at people. Like that's not how 
like that's not what they're doing yeah, it's very specific you're invited and that type of deal yeah and and not in a pretentious way of like oh you it's an invite only but it's almost kind of like hey we're enthusiasts we all like to drive we're buds and almost kind of like you guys have people over for a barbecue or something and obviously you're going to invite your friends over for a barbecue and you're not going to just in- throw an internet on the internet to say come over to my house and have some damn barbecue like, yeah uh everybody on facebook just come on up yeah so it's not one of those things so yeah not to paint the picture that they're you know trying to exclude people but obviously when you're having a drive which we know when you drive anywhere like you get any more than six or seven cars and you're trying to do like organization goes to hell yeah in the handbasket real just, fast no i don't want to meet there no i don't want to do this no i'm hungry no i gotta pee it's like jeez, man like you know, it kind of turns a lot of people off, but you know, the fact that they're able to get together and go for drives, they're all in the same, you know, ethos and they have all the same kind of wavelength of like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is going to be on our drive. You can break off anytime you want. It's just loosey goosey. It's, you know, it's, it's super nice, you know, and, and going back to road scholars, you know, we really appreciate what they're doing and we're looking forward to working with them at some point and, you know, maybe taking a visit of their shop and, you know, maybe we can, we, you know, backyard builds I know is up in that area too. Maybe we can kind of do a little, you know, North Carolina trip and hit up a, a couple tandem. places, you know, that, and that'll be pretty nice. But, um, so that was that evening and we ended up, you know, getting home relatively late. And, um, the next day was actually the concourse at Amelia. Um, I told Aaron flat out, I wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to make it to that one that morning. Um, not that, it, you know, that I felt bad or anything like that. I just was no, you know, I was ready to kind of head home at that point. But, uh, you know, Aaron took one for the team and he went out there and he met up with some people um, and had some more conversations. Um, how, was, how was Sunday out there? It was cool. Um, from being there last year, like in that background, it, it felt like there were more cars, more, more to see. I mean, from all the generations, um, a little less heavy on the, the Duesenberg style pre-war war cars mm-hmm. than, than I would, would imagine there would have been. Um, it was very Porsche heavy. I mean, the 960 was, 960 was well representative. I mean, Jackie X was their main nice. guy that they were uh, having for Amelia surrounding it. So there were, there were, of course, it would be very Porsche. Mm-hmm. Um, they had his nine, the 936 there, the Jules car. Nice. Um, John Oates was showing his car there as well and mm-hmm. ended up winning. Um, nice. I, think, I don't know if it won his class. I can't remember what, what, which award it won, but okay. he got some. He got a ribbon. Yeah, rightfully so. Um, what else was there for i mean it was it was similar to the cars and coffee just a just a higher level yeah uh, of car yeah higher level build you uh, got to were, you ran into charles again that I night did, too, didn't I, you? I, I was just walking around all of a sudden i see a mustache and a hat and i was like oh and there's charles <laughs> he was standing in front of their 356 continental okay and azul blue nice with like a, I don't know if it was an alligator or an ostrich leather luggage to the inside of it. Very interesting. And then, so they came with the, the Telefunken uh, radios. I just started paying uh-huh. attention to that because of uh, Jay and Nicole being sponsored by those and their stuff. Uh-huh. But yeah, that's all that. I mean, it was a beautiful car. They ended up winning, I guess their class, I don't know if it was their class, but they won an award for that car. Okay. They had another car, but we, I, I didn't look at that one and he wasn't sure what if they want anything for that or not um what else um and then getting just to see all the cars that did win Mm -hmm. some of the older stuff getting to parade around and drive because you're when you're walking around this event you're it's around literally the golf course around walking around the holes and over a bridge but there are cars driving through so you have to be watching yeah. out because there's still <laughs> stuff coming through to drive all the way to the end the other end oh, of the, yeah. uh, the golf course to get to the, to award get to the area mm-hmm. okay nice while you're walking around uh, makes it interesting yeah i bet um so all in all um it was a great event you know great experience um we're all back in uh tampa uh upcoming you know you'll be listening to this um the week of uh sebring so yeah. sebring will be the weekend and um, we're going to be there. We're going to have a special guest on while we're there as well. Again, I know I've made the claim that we're not guest heavy. It just happens to be that part of the season where, you know, we're mixing with a lot of people that we think that you guys either should know or already know and want to hear from. Um, so, you know, we're doing this for you guys to try to get, you know, as much attention to these folks as possible because I know everybody can't make it to these events and these guys do have a lot of portion knowledge and a lot of stuff to bring to the table and a lot of things to talk about. So. 
this is one channel where we can bring you all of that without you actually having to pump to all of these events. So, um, so that's coming down the line. Um, but before we close again, I want to reiterate, um, how amazing Amelia really is. Um, those that may have the stereotype that are Porsche guys that kind of like outlaw guys and you know, that's too fancy an event for me. It's not. It's actually very laid back. Yeah, I think it's more of a. I'm, I always think like Florida casual. Like yeah. it's not like it's not stuffy. You don't have to wear a blazer. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. It's, it's too damn hot, anyways, right? Yeah, like it's way, it was. Uh, it was. It was warm this yeah. time. It's not. This isn't. You know, Monterey weather. Like we don't. We don't have the ability to wear that out here. It's just too hot. It just doesn't make sense. But um, we want to thank Chris Brewer, the director of communications for Amelia Island, and their entire staff to for putting on such an amazing event they always do such a great job as Aaron described you know being out there on the concord field and you know being able to get up close and personal with these cars to preview them to see them um if you guys have never been it's a once in a lifetime opportunity especially if you live in the east coast you there is no reason you shouldn't be going i mean there was people that came out there from the west coast so what's that saying so if you live any even closer to them and you don't go to the event you're really hurting yourself. And then on top of that, I'm sure a lot of the places pretty much out of the Southern region, they're still freezing their ass off. Yeah, so, so it's even more of a reason for you to take a little weekend vacation and go come see this event and come see the, the everything in its glory. And then the, the effort that these guys are putting in, I mean, it's at the Ritz Carlton. It's very nice. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's not pretentious. No, not at all. I mean, you can you can you can make anything pretentious, but this this event's really not. And it's just a very very high class of car in, a, in a, an environment that you can enjoy it mm-hmm. with anybody. And the, and the, the great thing is, is a lot of these cars you get to hear them and running and see them. Um, unlike a lot of other Concord events, like where the cars are pre-staged, you know, like they're using the field for multiple things. Like for example, we talked about before the morning before we were cars and coffee, so none of these cars were on that field. The, Cars and coffee cars were out there. Nope. So then, you know, if you have the patience and the time, you hang out in the, the Ritz-Carlton area, you know, go grab a cocktail, and there's a lot of vendors outside too, and there's a lot of foot traffic, and there's a lot of people hanging out. They start bringing the cars in, and they got to drive them in, most of them. So you get to hear them run. You get to hear the turbo spool. You get to hear the flat 12s. You get to hear everything. So, I mean, that alone is an experience. You know, even if you don't go into the event, you're still seeing those cars. Um, but I encourage you, if you are going to make the trip, you should go into the event. Like, because again, it's worth all the money to do it. Yeah. That's what you're there for. Exactly. And, and, you know, if you're going to come, come for the whole weekend, you know, works is on Friday, you know, there's a cars and coffee event on Saturday and then the concourse is on Sunday. You don't have to take that much time off of work to participate in this event and be a spectator. And even if you want to drive your car, you know, it's still great. You know, when we talked to a gentleman who drove down from Pennsylvania. It parked, you know, in the 964 judging area. He was a nice guy, and he's like, hey, I want to get out of the weather. This is the first time I've ever been here. And I was like, welcome. Yeah, hey, you should come down. Why wouldn't you? You know, this is a great event. He's like, yeah, man, I just wanted to get out of the weather, and I wanted to see some Porsches, and I wanted to hang out. And he was very thankful to be there, you know, to get out of the freezing cold. And I'm sure. And, and again, like I said, it's you're really doing yourself a disservice if you don't go to Amelia Island and you go to this event because, you know, I think a lot of people going back, I want to break down the barrier of, you know, the Concourse de Elegance, you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of people get spooked for that. You know, everybody has a stereotype behind that where they're just like, oh, that's just blazers and, you know, people with too much money, you know, and, and everybody's pompous and it's not that at all. And, and guys it's not break that stereo down it's not it don't don't think that way it's not that at all it's it's car lovers it really is from everything you can imagine Mm -hmm. and on top of that too you know these guys that um maybe that you follow or that you look up to and race car drivers and all these people they all come to these events too and they're all approachable you know they're not they don't have a red rope around them where you can't ever speak to them or you can't ever see them or have a conversation with them all of these people are here and they just want to talk to whoever wants to talk to them about cars. You know, they want, they're car people just like us just make a lot more money. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all in all, um, you know, I, I know it was kind of a speedy recap and there was a lot, a lot of content there, but we do need to have to, you know, try to encapsulate something for you guys that who didn't make it to the event and what you guys got to see or hear, or, you know, on Instagram and what we covered. And like I said, we'll post some more pictures moving forward. Um, 
of the event so you guys can kind of see them as you listen to the show. We'll post them maybe tomorrow or the following day. Um, and again, you know, we have the Al episode that's going to come out with DRT wrap up um, on Thursday. Remember to check that out. Um, really, really knowledgeable guy, really, really connected guy and really, really humble guy. Yeah. For somebody that said, you know, I don't know. He kind of, he just, he was a little apprehensive first if he's going to be able to talk and carry the show, but yeah, kind of, we'll, we'll let you judge that after you hear the episode. Yeah. Al said he doesn't know if he was going to even have anything to share. So then we'll let you listen on Thursday and you can comment and see what, if he had anything to share or not. So, uh, but um, other than that, we're very thankful for the Amelia Island crew and Chris Brewer once again. And uh, we want to thank PCA as well and Boo for putting on uh, the works reunion because that's a lot of work as well to put that on. And I don't want to forget about those guys. Also want to support Portia and uh, Ray yeah. Schaefer for coming out. You know, obviously PCA has uh, Portia support. They were there sharing their car, their CGT car. and 992. Yeah, sharing everything that they have out there and want to thank those guys for taking the time and sharing everything because that's what makes these events, right? Everybody has to collaborate and, you know, oh, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it's everybody kind of like breaking those barriers down and working together. So we're truly thankful that they're putting in the effort and they're doing these things for us. And um, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. See you guys later. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at pcartalk.com.